and AIA Australia, helping your clients in their time of need is our number one priority. In 2016, we paid over $1.15 billion in claims to both retail and group members. That's over $4.5 million every working day. To offer your clients cover you can trust, chat to your AIA CDM today. Hi everybody, Ray Drummers from XY Advisor here. Uh, firstly, thank you so much for taking the time as many of you do every Thursday at 12 noon to have lunch with, with us and, and learn um, about some one of the wonderful stories that we, we learn about in, in the industry. So thank you so much. Uh, really excited. This is a, an interview that I'd organized, um, geez, probably a little while ago now uh, with Ray McHale, who's doing some really wonderful things uh, online which um, is of keen interest I know for, for many younger advisors and just learning you know what what the online space is uh, uh, presenting by way of opportunity uh, you know how that affords opportunities for you to learn more about uh, the intricacies within your own businesses but I guess importantly as well uh, you know where those prospects are coming from we're all sort of googling much more than than we ever ever, ever have before and uh, you know it, it serves the reason that you, you create an online presence as a result of that um, some of the wonderful things that we're, we're up to where it looks like we're, we're finalized where we're hosting the the Chrissy party this year in Sydney so we'll be announcing that very shortly and um, outside of that uh, as we switch into the the new year and it's uh, amazing that I'm, I'm sort of you know, already in, in the, the headspace of 2018, we've got a lot of wonderful projects which we uh, look forward to announcing uh, with you all. We've got some really wonderful partnerships organised for, for that. And uh, I uh, dare say 2018 will be the, the biggest year yet for us, so, so really excited. Uh, but with that, Ray, perhaps I might uh, ask if uh, I could ask you to introduce yourself. That would be really wonderful. Excellent. Thanks, Ray. This must be a uh, world first. Two Rays on the same XY podcast. Is that right? There's a, there's a show there for sure. The two Rays. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, enough of the joking. So Ray McHale, the co-founder, CEO of a company called Valuewiser. Um, 25 years experience in financial services, not financial planning per se, but financial services. And it was during this time that I became quite frustrated about not being able to measured the strength of the client relationships I was responsible for at the time. And I couldn't find a solution to that particular problem. So as you do, I went away and completed a doctorate in relationship marketing. And <laughs> as a result of that, developed some IP, which is uh, quite interesting and, and actually enables us to uh, measure the impact, uh, what, what drives things like client satisfaction, uh, retention and advocacy, which sort of sits at the heart of the, the product we developed as a result of that. Um, so I guess just a little bit about our why, if you like, why are we actually doing what we do? Um, we, we believe, you know, the clients should be at the center of everything you do. And if, if not, that it certainly should be. And, uh, secondly, if you're not measuring something, then it's really, really hard to manage it. Um, so, I mean, the whole financial planning process is predicated on collecting information from your clients and using that to improve their lives, hopefully. So you then undertake regular reviews and make sure everything's on track from time to time and make adjustments if required. So managing client relationships is really no different to that process. You're seeking information in this particular case from your clients and using that to help, your improve, help, help improve your performance over time, build stronger relationships with your clients and, and hopefully become a better advisor as a result of that. Amazing. I was just uh, thinking as, as you were talking, I don't, I, I'm pretty safe to say that you are uh, the first doctor we've ever come across in relationship marketing. Um, really, really keen to grab your thoughts on, uh, you know, you know, what your opinion is on, on fin services generally from a, from an academic perspective, you know, what, how, how do we go with relationships? Um, look, it's, uh... Financial services is a relationship business at the end of the day. It's, it's about clients and adding value to their lives. Um, some people are good at it. Uh, some aren't so good at it. And we've seen, obviously, uh, recent cases in you know, the wider financial services industry here in Australia and, and globally, in fact, cases where, you know, um, organisations really don't put the client at the heart of what they do. They, their, their full focus is on the bottom line. And, and as a result, you know, the longer-term um, prospects for that particular organization certainly go downhill 
if they're not focused on the client relationship. So, you know, I, th I think um, it's certainly a relationship business. It should be a relationship business. It, you know, we're building strong relationships person to person, essentially, although now mm -hmm. with the advent of technology in recent years, that's, that's just sort of becoming a, a hybrid model more, to, uh, more than uh, strictly face to face. But, but I think uh, there's certainly room for improvement. And that's, I guess that sort of underpins why we've developed what we've, uh, what we've done and, uh, and uh, we hope to have great success in the financial services industry. It's, um, it's kind of, you know, I, I sort of, you, you think of fin services uh, in terms of the hierarchy of what's important to people. And, you know, I, for me, I'd, I'd sort of put, put it as second to health, really. You know, we're, we're, you know, we're really talking to people about stuff that's at the core of, uh, you know, what, what they're, what's important to them, really. And it, it stands to reason that the relationship side is of utmost importance, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the three big things in people's lives typically are their, their health, their finances and their kids or their, or their relationship with their better half. Um, so, yeah, finance is way up there and uh, it's such a personal topic to, to everyone and such, so, so important to people's lives these days. So it's, it's definitely something that, that needs to, 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 to be a focus and uh, to be a very strong uh, as part of the relationship that people have with their financial planners. Would, it, would you agree, and I'm, I'm sort of uh, being devil's advocate here, would you agree with the, the concept that uh, as, as advisors try to scale relationships and move things online, that that comes at the cost of uh, enriched relationships with clients? I don't necessarily think so. I think uh, if, if you're going for a pure technology solution to scale your business, that could hinder or inhibit the, the, the strength of your relationships with your clients. But it's really about how you implement those sort of solutions in your day-to-day -day activities with the clients. So, and how, how you present that to your clients, how you position that with your clients as part of your relationship. Yeah. Um, if, you, if you're simply going to introduce technology overnight and say, well, this is the way we're going to do things now, uh, it's unlikely to work very well because you have to have your clients on board with that, obviously. And, yeah. uh, but, but technology offers so many wonderful opportunities for you to do a lot more with less, to, to scale your time a lot more effectively. And, um, you know, if you have the right solutions in place, I think it can actually enhance your relationships. It's, um, you know, one of, the, one of the things that we've spoken about uh, that, that you've built, which I think is rather wonderful, is, is the marketplace concept of uh, allowing uh, prospects or, or would-be consumers of fin services uh, to go online and, and have a look at the industry and, and you know, from, from their uh, lounge room really understand and, and, and choose who they're going to work with. It feels like the demand uh, is coming from... Uh, yeah, the the uh, the consumer rather than the the industry, and, and the industry is kind of playing catch up. But you know, I, I'm not I'm sort of an expert in this stuff. Is that is that your understanding? It's, it's probably yeah, it's probably a little bit like that, Ray. So, I mean, one of the biggest changes I've seen in financial services in recent years is is the empowerment of clients or, or the consumer. So, consumers are definitely in charge of pretty much everything that happens in their lives these days. There's so much information out there they have a choice about which services, which products they engage with, which advisors they engage with. There's heaps of information now online, as you know, about pretty much anything you want to, want to look up uh, and, and the propensity of people to use online platforms like Google, for instance, to do all their work for them, essentially, um, is, is, is pretty clear. Um, so consumer empowerment is, is certainly the big, big driver that I've seen in recent years, together with technology, obviously, which is which has sort of led to their empowerment in a lot of different ways. So I think, yeah, people, people are certainly using technology to get a lot of information before they even engage with an advisor. Uh, that's, you, you, that's, you're not even aware of it. Oh, yeah, I, um, I, you know, being not aware of it is one of the things I was keen to talk to you about. And, you know, one of the themes of, of today's, you know, the, the importance of building an online presence. Um, you know, my, my sense is a, a prospect would probably suss me out half a dozen times on Google or from, you know, a few different points before they even, you know, pick up the phone or send me an email or, you know, if a friend of theirs is recommending my services to them as, a, as an introduction, you know, I, I, if I don't have an online space, uh, then, then I wonder, I wonder if, if the phone would ring. 
Um, you might be lucky, I think, these days, quite frankly, Ray. It's, uh, yeah. Unless, of course, as you mentioned, that you're um, uh, being referred by an existing client or a friend of theirs who's had a you know, really, really great experience of being your client. That's, that's more than likely to occur because people are, uh, are open to those sort of suggestions from their friends and family, obviously. But, but if you're looking to scale, um, scale the growth of your business and, and take advantage of the technology that's available these days that consumers mm. have access to, ready access to, then it's yeah. really, really important you have a, a very clear, well-defined and consistent online presence. So that, that could be obviously your website is, is a good starting point, uh, your LinkedIn profile, and any other third-party sites that uh, potentially where you could showcase your capabilities, your value proposition to your ideal client. I guess, I guess the one that's probably front of mind is uh, things like advisor ratings. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, do, you, do you have a sense of, of you know, what, how, what that's sort of doing for the industry? Is that sort of becoming the, the standard or the status quo rather where people have an opportunity, consumers have an opportunity to rate and review advisors? So there's, there's a bit of history there. Yeah, look, I think uh, what, what Advisor Ratings has done has been, been great for the industry in some ways in terms of, um, I guess, bringing focus back to the client and the importance of being client-focused in your business. Um, I don't want to be uh, too specific around Advisor Ratings. There are other platforms around as well. Yeah. Um, I, guess, I guess I'd make you know, some, some specific points around sites that sort of provide that sort of service. Um, uh, number one, I think consumers... Um, really are smarter than sometimes we think they are. Yeah. And uh, so, so it's really, really important that if you're using a, a site like Advisor Ratings or any of the other sites out there that, um, you know, you do a bit of due diligence, due diligence, I guess, in terms of what the ratings, you know, is there science behind the ratings? Um, does, it, does it sort of uh, withstand scrutiny around the scientific backing and underpinning? Um, mm. Is that always clear? And, and it should be clear to consumers who are using the service as well. Um, making sure that the ratings can't be gained in some way. And what I mean by that is that, you know, you, you don't have your, your competitors going under the site and, um, and leaving sort of negative ratings that are going to impact your profile. And, and conversely, you know, if, if you're using the site to, to generate leads, you're not just focusing on your best clients. To, to get you know high ratings because you know, consumers can see through that. I, I know I personally can when I when I go onto Google, I'm looking for a service provider, and and there may be some ratings there from a particular third party site. You always check it out, and, and it's pretty obvious sometimes, um, you know that, that things may have been gamed in some way, shape or form. So consumers are really savvy to that these days. I think because they're, they're just used to it, and uh, so that, I guess that's the comment I'd make around those sort of sites. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good point, and, and you've, you've sort of led me into my, my next question, which is around, you know, uh, when, when I talk to especially established advisors, it, it's sort of a catch-22 where they're really keen on building an online presence in these, in these types of environments, but they're frankly quite fearful because you've got no control as to what people say. And, and you know, that, that's, that talks to the, the authenticity of an environment like that. The problem sure. is... Um, you know, I was just talking about it earlier, something off topic. You know, if I, if I bought uh, a whole bunch of flowers for my girlfriend and I had a bad experience, I could, you know, smash them on Google and I could get all my friends to... And, you know, these things make big differences when, uh, when people are making decisions about, about money, but there's no control. So what, what's an advisor to do? Do you just stay out of the conversation or is there, is there a way that you can be a bit thoughtful about it? No, I think, I think uh, advisors should, should engage could engage online. Um, that's the place to be these days. I mean, uh, most people go online, as I said earlier, 90% of pretty much every search that happens globally starts on Google these days. So it is a major source of information for consumers, uh, for, for financial advice and all sorts of services. So you can't ignore that. You can't, um, you know, uh, turn away and say, look, I'm just not, ga- not going to engage socially or online. It just doesn't work anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe if you've got an established uh, practice and your book's full and you're not really looking to grow your business, that, that might be a strategy. But, but I, I, I suggest, you know, you probably most of your members are in the growth phase and, and are looking for, yeah. for growth opportunities. So, you know, the piece of advice I would provide is um, make sure you're engaging with your existing clients on a regular basis, collecting feedback and using that feedback and leveraging that for your advantage. Um, 
Uh, that's, that's something obviously we do on our platform and I'm not going to sort of make this a salesy message, but, but that's, that's how we, I guess we differentiate ourselves in the marketplace. We, we're adding a lot of value to the, to the advisors by enabling them to collect feedback from their existing clients, not necessarily for, you know, inviting people onto a third party site and leaving ratings and having no control over the whole process. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we believe that having that sort of control is, is paramount. It's, it's really, really important to your reputation as an advisor. Uh, you need to, you know, feel like you, you have a, a sense of control over the whole process. Uh, and at the same time, you're getting value from the feedback you're getting from your clients, so you can actually improve and um, get better at what you do over, over time. But keeping your clients happy is the best antidote. Um, it's, a, it's a really good point you raise about us. Sorry to cut you off. You, you, just a real, uh, uh, you know, um, you know, client client feedback. We we have had a lot of conversations within the network on on how you ask for client feedback in a way that is authentic, in a way that doesn't annoy them. It's just not like just not another, you know, thing that 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 pops in the mailbox. And and you know, yeah. you, you create an environment well, that that clients can give you stuff that's helpful rather than gripes or, you know, your friendly saying that, that they're happy with you. So, you know, how, 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 how do you sort of approach that? And, you know, it sounds like something that you guys do every day. Yeah, look, we, you know, we put a lot of, a lot of thought into this and, um, and obviously it's, you know, our, our number one goal is to help planners get better at what they do and develop stronger relationships. So, so what we do day in, day out uh, as part of that process is really, really important to us. So we put a lot of thought into it. So making sure, A, the content of the survey or whatever method you're using to get feedback from your clients is relevant, is going to add value to you as an advisor, is, is providing a great opportunity for your clients to feel like they're being heard and they're being listened to, they're being valued, and as a result, they can expect a better experience next time they deal with you. Um, making it quick, making it easy, uh, making it uh, valuable, as, as I said, to both parties. So, yeah, we've, we've put a lot of thought into this and um, just to make sure that, you know, the, the whole experience from both sides, if you like, is, is, a, is a great one. And as a result, you know, we're getting um, something in the order of 45 to 50 percent response rates from the, from the people who are using our platform today, which is something like 10 you percent know, of 10 times, I should say, uh, what, a, what a typical survey response rate would be. Yeah, you just stole my next question. I was going to ask about response rates. <laughs> uh, wow, okay. And is there, is there a level, you know, if you're a younger advisor and you're starting out and, you know, you're, you're starting to build the business, at what point would you suggest that you engage in a process of reviewing uh, or, or surveying, rather, your, your client base to make sure that you're, you're hitting the pulse properly? Yeah, so our core belief is that you should be doing that pretty much from the outset. So okay. uh, as soon as uh, as soon as a, a lead comes through the door, essentially, um, if they don't, if they're not converted into a new client, then you want to find out why. So I think at that point in time, it's really really important for the advisor to understand well what what went wrong. Why didn't the lead become a client? Is it something I did where they weren't ready, or it wasn't it a good fit? So I think at that very early stage of the relationship, it's really important to get that sort of feedback because that's part of the growing journey for the advisor as well. Uh, so they can they continually improve and refine their approach when they're talking to new leads to ensure that you know, they're covering off the things that they need to cover off and things that are valued by the lead, so to speak. If they become a new client, obviously, soon after that initial meeting or soon after they've become a client and they've signed off on the statement of advice, for instance, and it's being implemented, um, we think it's really important to get feedback soon after that process has been completed because that's, that's a critical point in the client journey. They've just become a new client. They've gone through this you know, reasonably lengthy process of fact-finding and you know, statement of advice and uh, signing off on that, and et cetera, et cetera, and actually committing to the relationship. So we think it's really, really important for the advisor to have the opportunity to get some feedback at that point in time, as well as the consumer, obviously, because, you know, that, that sort of sets the scene for their relationship going forward. So they, they get to expect, if you like, uh, to be asked for feedback on a regular basis. And should advisors be scared of this process? I can, it's a natural feeling for people to feel scared if they're not used to asking for feedback from their clients. And we totally understand that. Um, we've, we've done our best to make the whole process as simple and quick and easy as possible for advisors. Um, but look, 
the, the simple answer is no. Uh, I think, you know, um, uh, sometimes there are painful truths that, that come out of surveys and feedback, but, mm. but it's essential that advisors get, get that feedback and learn from that and grow as an individual and grow as an advisor. That's the only way that people are going to actually improve over time. And, mm. and improve the um, yeah the growth opportunities for their business. So client feedback is, is sort of central to the whole process. I wonder if there's an opportunity. I'm just sort of thinking as you talk, and, and you, again, you're better placed than I am uh, to, to have an opinion. But you know, I wonder I wonder if there's benefit in you know I work in an established business, and let's pretend we don't have an online presence. Um, you know, we go through the opportunity of, of surveying our clients, uh, get a decent response rate, understand what we're not doing so well, which of course we can work on and internally, but you know, really pick up what our niches are and what our clients enjoy about us and basically yes. pass it on to the marketing guys and say, Hey, let's, let's build an, an online presence around that. And let's, let's, let's sing, sing from the rooftops, what we're good at. Um, you know, are you, are you sort of seeing that that's, that's kind of a, a, a cool or a useful way for advisors to, you know, really work out what their identity is? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think there are two, there are two, core elements to getting getting feedback. So if, if the feedback isn't all that positive, it enables you to quickly close the loop with, with each of the clients that have provided that, that sort of feedback. So being aware of the, the issue or the problem the client has raised in, in the feedback is critical. Uh, and then being able to close that loop very quickly, contacting the client and saying, hey, I've noticed you've just raised this particular issue. You know, how do we resolve this to your satisfaction? What do we need to do to make this better for you, essentially, to, to mm -hmm. enhance your retention rate? So that's one side of the equation. The other side is, as, as you allude to, is the more positive experience that, or, or positive use of feedback that actually helps build the profile of the advisor and also to help them grow the business through marketing activity. So, uh, you know, feedback can be used for a lot of different reasons. So, uh, you know, to, to identify ref potential referral sources, for instance, yeah. to capture potential testimonials that you could use in your marketing efforts, to um, automate some lead generation, which we provide on our platform, based on what your clients are actually saying. So based on your performance, essentially. So there are a lot of very positive uh, outcomes that can be generated based on feedback. So it's not all negative. It's nothing to be feared from that perspective at all. It's something that can be quite easily leveraged by, by young advisors and older advisors alike. What, what I rather like about it, um, you know, coming, coming out of the Horizons program actually about four or five years ago now and, you know, you're, you're kind of quite green and you're asked to come up with your, your CVP or your client value proposition and work out your ideal clients and all this sort of stuff. You know, yeah. frankly, you, you, you're kind of guessing, you know, you've got an idea of who you want to be and who you want to talk to, but you're kind of not sure. What, I, what, what, what sounds like a, as, as an awesome opportunity out of this is, you're not the one that's articulating it. You know, people are telling you how you come across and people are telling you what you're good at. And, and you know, through that, I feel like you've come up with a more robust understanding of, you know, what, what you're really about. Yeah, exactly. So it's all about helping advisors get better at, at the end of the day. And, and it's a journey, right? So as you said, if you come out of the, come out of the academy and, uh, you know, you're not quite sure what your value proposition is or what your ideal uh, uh, client persona might look like at that point in time. It is a bit of a, an experimentation, uh, but, but you know, if, you, if you're collecting feedback from that point forward, then that journey becomes a lot easier because you can use that to actually help refine your value proposition, figure out what you're really good at, and what you're not so good at, and perhaps areas you could work on, um, and also to help you define what that ideal client might look like. So you can actually focus your efforts in terms of growing your business where you have the strongest uh, strongest attributes. I am keen on uh, sort of wrap, wrapping up around around the client side of things. So you know, if you're, um, you know, again, you're, you're you're a young advisor looking to grow your business, and and you, you're looking at online. Is there is there a specific uh, person who's on the other side of that and using Google and sussing you out online? And you know, is there, is there a particular demographic of client that's that's in that space, or is it pretty broad church? It's pretty broad church, I'd say, at this stage, Ray. We've, we only launched, launched that, site, that side of our marketplace uh, fairly recently, about three or four months ago. So it's, it's pretty early days in terms of traffic to the site. And uh, so we're doing a lot of work in terms of SEO and uh, generating traffic to the site, obviously. But yeah. what we've found based on the experience to date is 
it's, it's pretty much across the board. We're getting a whole range of different people, different age groups, different genders, uh, locations, uh, people looking for specific advice. You know, it could be estate planning, cash flow planning, uh, retirement planning. Um, so mortgage, you know, debt management type uh, issues. So, you know, there's a lot of, um, a lot of different topics, obviously, that people can seek advice about. Uh, and mm. we, we pretty much cover them all in terms of what we offer online. So, you know, and we're finding, you know, that, that the people are actually engaging with that. We're making the process very, very easy for, for people to actually engage with that, that whole finding a planner or finding an advisor. So, you know, to date it's been um, pretty much across the board. What's, what's, been, what's been some of the key areas that people are, are looking at? Is it, I, I imagine debt's quite per, pertinent. Um, yeah. yeah. Is, is, that, is that fair? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we all know that uh, the level of indebtedness in Australia is sort of, I think, second or maybe even first, the highest in the world per capita. And um, you know, there's been a lot of media coverage, obviously, recently around what happens when interest rates go up. And there's a lot of talk now about potentially a Reserve Bank um, making the first increase their interest rates, official interest rates in the near future. So yeah. look, it, it, it is a topic for discussion around the barbecue at the weekend and across the, the family dinner tables, obviously. So you were getting, um, getting quite a bit of um, interest, I guess, from consumers who are looking for advice, looking for guidance. Uh, they, they're getting starting to get concerned. They might be you know, highly leveraged, uh, looking, uh, looking for some advice about how best they can manage that situation and, and uh, not have a hard landing at the end of the day. What, what would you say um, in, in response to the idea that you've got an established business now, so we're on the other side of the coin, um, you know, you've, you've got your, your clients and you're kind of ticking along and you say, you know what, I've got what I need. I don't need to worry about building an online presence. Would you have a response to someone that had that opinion? Yep, I'd say that's, that's great. That's uh, really good to hear that people have reached that stage in their, in their uh, career and, and professional life. Um, I wouldn't necessarily discount uh, getting client feedback at that point in time either. Uh, you don't necessarily have to generate leads as a result of that, that you, know, you can opt out of that, that particular service, but you know, if you've reached that stage, but it's still critical, I think, in terms of um, preparing the business for eventual exit, let's say. So you may be nearing retirement, you're pretty comfortable where you are, you've built your book, it's, it's ticking along, uh, you're not really in the market for, for new clients, but you, know, you always have to have your eye on the future in terms of what's my exit strategy here, am I going to... Uh, you know, am I going to sell the book to someone in the practice? Am I looking to sell externally? Am I going to sort of uh, gently uh, exit the business and stay involved in some way? So actually maximising the value of your practice is, is then a, a prime issue uh, that you should be thinking about. Uh, so client feedback can, can obviously be used quite productively to help you prepare for that exit, if, if you like, whenever that may occur. On the other side of that, bring you know again back to that younger advisor, and, and you're looking to get into a business. Uh, have you seen? Have you seen? Um, you know, acquisitions. The acquisition process started by the buyer insisting on a on a review or a survey. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. We've uh, certainly had discussions with some of the uh, practices on our on our platform at the moment about that. Um, we've had uh, had some planners join recently. They're actually just purchased the book but didn't go through the process and and we've talked about you know, well that's something we could actually help with as well in terms of okay. um helping you do some due diligence around the quality of the book and the nature or the, the quality of the relationships of the existing client base with the current owners and planners and advisors so i'd, I'd certainly uh use that I'll offer that up as an option for younger younger advisors looking to do something similar um i mean obviously there is a process that a lot of dealer groups and, and practices go through when they're going, uh, when they're expanding their books and so forth. But if you're setting up fresh, you probably haven't been through that process before. So any, any information you can get that helps inform that decision, uh, I think is quite valuable. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. So I, um, you know, I might ask at, at the end if, you know, uh, uh, for any, any sort of key tricks or tips that you might have in mind, but whilst you have a think about that to, to sort of wrap up from, from the, the things that we've covered today, you know, building an online presence in, in 2017, I think, you know, goes without saying is, is imperative uh, for, for advisors. Um, and, and out of today, I think, you know, one of the things that I'd not sort of thought about previously, but by, by you know, surveying your clients and understanding what you're good at, of course, as, as well as what you're bad at, but by understanding what you're good at, 
um, presents a marketing opportunity in the way that you, um, you, you, you word, word outgoing, outbound material, how you position yourself online, uh, you know, perhaps tweaking your service packages and the like, um, you know, it strikes me as an opportunity that the answer is already within your business and you perhaps don't need to engage in a, you know, a consultancy firm for a for strategy, you know, the, the, the answer might, might already be internal and uh, you know, yeah, that, yeah. that might work quite well. Um, and then, and then with Ray, is there any, any sort of final thoughts you, you might have for the guys? Yeah, look, I mean, in terms of key takeaways, obviously getting feedback from clients, that's, that's number one on my list uh, for obvious reasons. Um, don't be afraid of it, uh, embrace it, use it, um, leverage it for your benefit. It's, it really does work. Um, uh, secondly, make sure that you're engaged online in, in a very consistent, high quality way. So making sure that your, your profile is out there on all the appropriate platforms, the channels that your, your ideal client is likely to visit. Uh, making sure that's a consistent profile, it's high quality, it, it covers off your value proposition that makes you unique in the marketplace. And, and lastly, I think adding value. So, um, what, you know, people, people aren't going to just um, necessarily walk in your front door and engage with you um, these days anyway. So with the online options that are available, they're going to check you out. If you're adding value to their life in some way, that's what they're looking for. They, they want you to add value so they can get to know you, like you and trust you before they'll engage as a client. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, and, and sorry, one, one final thing. Uh, young advisor, keen on actually getting themselves on these platforms to um, you know, have the opportunity to be rated and, and start to have a presence. I mentioned advisor, right? That was just one that was front of sure. mind. Um, you know, what, what, what else is out there? Um, look, look, there's a few other few other platforms out there. I mean, if you just go to Google, I'm sure that'll there's a whole range of uh, different service providers that that, that pop up. Um, some some do lead generation, some yep. do ratings. Uh, ours ours is, is certainly none of those. It's it's certainly more focused on the advisor side of the business, if you like. But as a secondary point, we or, or a secondary value, we we uh, create new leads for the practices. Um, but yeah, look, there's a whole range of different service providers in Australia, and if you if you look offshore as well, the US, the UK, okay. there's a whole range of uh, these sort of sites out there as well. So um, I, I guess from that you can sort of surmise that uh, online is the place to be. It's 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 really where consumers are hanging out. It's where they're looking for information, but more importantly, they're looking for social proof. They're looking for evidence that you're going to be the best person to to advise them on. The critical area of their finances going forward for the rest of their life essentially so so you really do need to be prepared for that <laughs> my mum my sister and my dad as a as a review won't work anymore will it <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Guys, um, you know, as, as you all know, we, we put this up on Facebook Live and, and we, we put the podcast through iTunes and all the various uh, links. Ray, Ray is part of the Facebook group. So if there's any, any food for thought or any questions um, that we've maybe not answered or, or that you've, you've thought about uh, as during our, our chat today, please do. Um, ask away on, on the on the on the Facebook page. Uh, Ray's Ray's been very generous with his time, and I'm sure would, would happily uh, answer any questions that, that anyone's got up uh, outside of that. Um, other than that, I would, I'd like to uh, take the opportunity to thank AIA. They make all of these podcasts um, possible. Uh, they've been really wonderful in supporting us this year. So a big thank you to the guys there. But with all of that, uh, you know we're we're almost at the at the weekend. So enjoy the rest of the working week, and uh, thanks again for for your time, Ray. No problem at all. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Thanks. Take care, everyone. All the best.